Hello and welcome to this tutorial from Profoto Vector. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you Affinity Photo's macro feature. This is going to be basically the equivalent to Adobe Photoshop Actions and this feature allows you to record a series of steps in your photo editing or manipulation process and then replay those steps on another photo. So essentially you are automating your photo editing workflow. Let me show you what I mean by demonstrating how macros work inside of Affinity Photo. So we'll start by opening up a photo by going to File, Open. And I'm just going to click on the photo I want to use. I know it's this photo here, so I'll click Open. This is a raw photo, so it is going to open this up inside of the Develop Persona. I'll just come over here and click Develop. This is going to open our image up into the Photo Persona. So now our raw image is opened up inside of the photo persona. If you're working with the JPEG, this will automatically open right up into the photo persona. So the macro feature is not going to be found inside of any persona besides the photo persona. So you do need to be inside of this workspace. But once your image is opened up in the photo persona, you're gonna go to view, studio, macro. And this is gonna bring up your macro panel and on the left side here, you have a record button, a stop recording button, and a play button. So this record button or the start recording button is going to be how we record our steps as we are editing our photo. You can pretty much record any photo editing or photo manipulation action inside of Affinity Photo. There are a few exceptions to that. I'll show you one in today's tutorial. But I can start a macro recording by coming over here and clicking the start recording button. So you'll know you're recording because this button will now be grayed out and let me just center up our image here. So now that we're recording any photo editing actions we take on this photo will show up over here as a step in the recording. So let's start off here with a simple adjustment. So I'll come over here to the adjustment tab and let's scroll up here and go with a levels adjustment. And you'll see that when I click on the levels adjustment, of course, it's going to bring up the levels dialog here. But over on the left side, inside of the macro panel, we have this first step and it's labeled add levels adjustment. So we haven't actually made any adjustments here. So that's going to show up as a new step, but the first step is there. So let's come over here and just make some minor tweaks to the levels. I'm just going to adjust the black level here, the white level and the gamma. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to using the levels tool. But you'll see that once we create some levels adjustments, if I come over here, we now have a second step. And this is going to be set adjustment parameters. So this step is just going to be the exact adjustments we made inside here of our levels tool. And now I can exit out of here. So there is our levels adjustment. Let's add another step to our macro recording. I'll come over here to another adjustment just to show another example of this, the HSL adjustment. This is of course hue, saturation, and luminosity. So let's say I want to increase the saturation slightly of this. So we'll go with 10% and then I want to brighten the photo up a bit. So maybe we'll go also to 10% on here. Actually that's a bit too much. So let's go maybe 5% to brighten this up. So you'll see here we have two steps. So adding the HSL shift adjustment, which was simply clicking on the HSL adjustment feature. That's the first step. And then once we made our adjustments to the HSL sliders here, just the saturation and luminosity, those showed up as a second step, which is going to be the set adjustment parameter step. So I'll come over here and exit out of here. So those are just two adjustment examples. Any of the adjustments you make to your image on here are gonna show up as a step inside of the macro recording. But as I mentioned, pretty much anything can be recorded as a macro step. So let's demonstrate that by adding an unsharp mask filter to this. So that's gonna be a lie filter. So let's come back over here to layers. And what I need to do is come over here and click on the background layer. That's gonna be our image. And when I do that, it's going to come up with this little dialog here that says select layer. This is just telling our macro recording what exactly we're trying to do here with this step. So in this case, we're trying to select the main background layer, which is our photo. So I'll come over here and click select. Once I do that, you'll see that will show up as a separate step called set current selection. So that's telling the macro recording we need to select the background layer. 
And then we're gonna come over here and we're going to add a live filter to this. So I'll click on here and let's go with that unsharp mask live filter so we can sharpen this. So now you'll see it says add unsharp mask blur layer. That's its own macro step. And then of course, as we make adjustments to this, that will also show up as a step over here. So that says unsharp mask. So let's adjust this. We'll set the radius to around five and maybe turn the factor up a bit. So now we've got some sharpening. And I'll come over and exit out of here. So before I move on to playing this recording on another image, I'm gonna show you some of the things that you can't do with a macro recording. So for starters, let's come over here and create a new pixel layer. So that's gonna add this as pixel. You'll see that this shows up as a step called add pixel. So first off, one thing we cannot do with the macro recording is we cannot add a gradient. So we can't draw a gradient using the gradient tool. So when I click on here and then on the pixel layer, I try to click and drag to draw a gradient there. You'll see we get this little assistant that pops up and it says cannot record create fill. So that's one thing we can't do. Let's close that out. Another thing is we can't move the layer in the layer stacking order. So if I try to click and drag this to the very top and release, you'll see we also get a message here that says cannot record move. So I'll close that out and I'm gonna hit Control Z to back up before we added that pixel layer. One last thing I wanna mention that you cannot do with a macro recording is scale based on a percentage. You can scale images as a macro recording, but you can't scale it at 50%, for example. So let me just show you what I mean. If I go to document, resize document. So inside of here, we cannot go to units and choose percent. It's just not available here but we can scale this based on pixels. So for example, if we know the largest dimension size has to be 1920 and I hit the tab key, we can scale this down to 1920 by around 1280 and click resize. So that will scale this down here as a macro recording. But let's say we're done with this macro recording. What I need to do is come over here and click the stop recording button. So that is going to stop recording all of the actions we perform on our image. And the next step is the most important step. That is saving the macro. If we don't save the macro, it'll just get recorded over next time we record another macro. So to save this, I can come over here and click add to library. That's gonna pop up with this little pop-up box called add macro. And now we can name our macro. I'll name this basic portrait edit. I can also choose a category if I've created categories. We don't have any categories yet, so this is just gonna go into the default category and I'll click OK. So that's gonna automatically bring up our library panel. And here you can see all the default macros that come with Affinity Photo, but we also have the new one we just created right here. And if I wanted to, I can organize these and I can do that by coming up top here to this top hamburger icon. That's what this little menu is called. And if I click on this, you'll see we have a new option called create new category. So I'll click on that. And by default, that's gonna create a new default category called macros. And by the way, don't confuse this little hamburger icon with the one below it. But each category is going to have its own little hamburger icon. So next to the macros category, we'll click on that. And that's going to allow us to rename this. So I'll click rename. And let's just name this portrait macros and click OK. So now we have a new category called portrait macros. And I can click and drag this macro we just created inside of this new category. And now our macros are nice and organized. So let's open up another image here and apply the macro steps to it. So I'll go to File, Open. And in this case, I'm gonna go with this photo right here. So this once again is a raw photo. I'll just click Develop to open this up into the photo persona. So now our photo is opened up and you'll see over here inside the layers panel, there are no edits made to this yet. If I wanted to add all the same edits we made to the last photo, we can do that using the macro we recorded. So to apply the macro to this image, I'll just double click on the macro. So as you can see, that applied all the edits we performed with the last macro recording to this image. The problem here is that we added that scale step to this and because the image dimensions of this image are different from the previous image, 
it's caused this image to look squished. So we can fix this by editing our macro and removing those image scaling steps. And to do that, I'll come over here to the basic portrait edit macro, right click on it and go to edit macro. So here are all of our macro steps opened up into the macro panel. Let's say we wanted to remove the scaling property. So that's gonna be this document property step here. All we have to do is uncheck that option. And if we wanted to edit any of the settings of the image adjustments or the live filter, for example, all we have to do is come over here and click on this little gear icon. So when I click on that, that allows me to edit the parameters we set. So in this case, we've got our black level slider, our white level slider, and the gamma slider. So let's say we didn't want to add as much from the white level slider there. So we can adjust that. And once all of our changes are ready, we can save this as another macro. So we can't save this over our existing macro. We have to create a new one. So I'll come over here and click the add to library button and we'll name this basic portrait edits two. And this time, because we already have our category, we can choose the portrait macros category and come over here and click OK. So if I hit Control Z, that'll undo the previous steps from the original macro, and now we can start over. So let's come over here to the basic portrait edits two macro, double click on that, and that's going to add all of those steps here without the resizing property there, and with the levels adjustment calmed down a bit. So there are a few other important features of the macro panel that I haven't covered yet. Let's come back over here to the macro panel. For one, if we wanted to start over with a new recording and we've already saved this, we can come over here and click the little reset icon. Now we can start from scratch. Also, let me come back here to the basic portrait edits, right click and go to edit macro to bring those steps back up. Let's say we wanted to play out the steps and test out what it looked like on this image. First off, I can hit control Z to undo that macro. So let's say we wanted to see what this looked like without the levels adjustment. So I'll uncheck that. We can come over here and click the play button and that's going to play out those steps there. And you can see that has added our adjustments over here on the image. Let me hit control Z to back up. I can also come over here and click the export icon and that's going to allow me to export this as a .af macro file. So I can export this anywhere on my computer. Let's name this basic portrait edits three and click save. And let me come over here and just reset this to get rid of those steps. And to the right of the export option is the import option. So when I click on that, now we can import a macro. This allows you to easily import macros created by somebody else. So if somebody created a custom macro that you can download somewhere, this allows you to easily import that macro. So for example, here's our macro. I'll double click on this and that's going to import all of our macro steps. And finally, let's say we wanted to add steps to this macro that we imported, or maybe this is a macro that we started earlier. All I have to do is come over here and click the start recording button. And what's gonna happen now is that any adjustments we make to our image are gonna get added to the tail end of this. So let's come over to the adjustment panel. And for example, come over to white balance and we're just gonna make this a bit warmer. There you'll see the add white balance adjustment is added here along with set adjustment parameters. And we'll exit out of here. And once again, we'll stop the recording there and now we have a new macro recording. Of course, I'd have to add that to the library to save it, which I'm not gonna do here, so I'll just exit out of there, reset this, and finally, let's say we wanted to close out the macro and library panels. Once again, we can go to View, Studio, Macro, and finally, View, Studio, Library. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also check out my website at profotovector.com. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.